Dear patriots, dear truth seekers, this time I would like to talk about the subject of the Real Society and Enterprise Aldebaran. In 2007, I bought this book from Jan van Helsing or Jan Udehauli, Enterprise Aldebaran, and it depicts an incredible story. If you haven't read this book, you can order it on Amazon. I have published some of the pages of this book on my website. We will now briefly read the history of the Real Society on my website. It is from my website, www.imperialgermans.com, on the so-called Real Society. Updated on the 16th of December 2020. The meaning of the Rural Society symbol. Left the dark or iron age, the age of lies and deception, the age of war, destruction and hunger. Center, the V lightning flash of divine intervention. When the RDs together with Jesus Christ saved the world and freed from the dominion of Satan. Write in purple or violet the new golden age of peace and freedom. In this age everyone will be truly free. Everyone will be able to sing really free. Everyone will know why they are here and everyone will be able to actualize themselves in the new golden age. Introduction. Before 1919, Karl Haushofer, a gorgeous disciple and Tibetan traveler, founded the Second Order, the Brothers of Light, in addition to the Tula Society, which was later renamed the Rural Society. The Rural Society also united the Templar Formation, the Lord of the Black Stone, DHVSS, which had emerged from the Germanic Order in 1917, and the Black Knights of the Tula and SS Elite Black Sun, to make a comparison with the Tula Society, the easiest way to grasp the difference would be to say that the Tula Society was dedicated to the material and political things, and the Rural Society was essentially afterlife oriented. But there are still numerous points of contact between the Rural and Tula Society, such as Atlantis, Tula, the island of the blessed epos of Gilgamesh, the original connection between Germania and Mesopotamia, but also ancient sanctuaries, such as the Externsteine, the Untersberg, or the Stronix local mountain. In December 1919, a small circle of Tula, the Lords of the Black Stone, and rural people met in the Forces Lodge, rented for this purpose in Ramsau near Berchtesgaden. Among them was in addition to the medium Maria Otzic, another one known, only simply known as Sigrun. Maria had received medially transmissions in a secret temporal script, a language completely unknown to the medium. The telepathic messages came, according to the rural scriptures, from the solar system Aldebaran, which is located 68 light years away from us in the constellation of Taurus. So essentially, the Tula Society was responsible for the physical realm or the material world. From the Tula Society, the NSDAP emerged that tried to change something in this world. The Real Society, on the other hand, was concerned with the spiritual world or other world. The media of the Real Society started receiving messages telepathically from Aldebaran with the instructions to build saucer-type spacecraft. We will now read the article on the development of flying discs in the Third Reich. The SSE4 flying disc development in the Third Reich. Enterprise Aldebaran, page 129 to 130. Within the SS, there was a group concerned with the production of alternative energy. In the SSE4, Development Department 4 of the Black Sun, whose main concern was to make energy independent of foreign crude oil. The SSE4 developed a Tula Triebwerk, later called the Tula Tachyonator, from the existing real engines and Captain Hans Kohler's tachyon converter. In August 1939, the first round wing airplane, RFZ 5, took off. It was a medium heavy armed flank gyro with the peculiar name Hanabu 1. It had a crew of 8 men, measured 25 meters in diameter, reached an initial speed of 4,800 kph and later up to 17,000 kph. It was equipped with two 6 cm KSK power stream cannons in turrets and 4 MK16 and had a space capacity of 60%. By the end of 1942, the Hanubu 2 was also constructed. The diameter varied between 26 and 32 meters and the height between 9 and 11 meters. It could carry a crew of between 9 and 20 people, was powered by a Tula Tachyonator and reached a speed of 6,000 kph near Earth. It was also space qualified and had a range of 55 flight hours. At that time, plans already existed for the World 7 large capacity spaceship with a diameter of 120 meters. It was able to transport the entire crews. A short time later, the Hanubu 3, the absolute showpiece of all flying discs, was completed with a diameter of 71 meters. It was flown and also filmed. It could transport a crew of 32 men, had a range and flight duration of over 8 weeks, and reached a speed of at least 7,000 kph in the Earth's atmosphere, according to the documents of the SS Secret Archives, up to 40,000 kph. Around Christmas 1943, there was an important meeting of the Rural Society in the North Sea Resort of Kohlberg. Also present were the media Maria and Sigrun. Main topic of this meeting was the Enterprise Aldebaran. The media had received exact information about the inhabited planets of the Sun Aldebaran, and they started to work at the trip there. On January 2nd, 1944, a meeting took place between Adolf Hitler, Heinrich Himmler, Künke from the World Society, and Professor Dr. Schumann, in which the World Project was discussed. 
They wanted to use the Rose 7 large spaceship named Odin to travel to Aldebaran for a dimensional conduit independent of the light speed barrier. According to the documents of the Black Sun, the first dimensional conduit test flight is said to have taken place in the winter of 1944. This flight is said to have been close to a disaster because photos show the Rose 7 after this flight, on which it looked as if it had been on the road for over 100 years. The outer cell skin looked very old and was damaged in several places. So the Antriebstechnische Werkstätte built a whole series of flying discs in between the years 1922 and 1945. Parallel to the real flying discs, the Haunobu series and the Andromeda devices were also built. The Andromeda devices were initially built in the submarine yards because they were essentially U-boats with anti-gravity technology or a tachyon drive. So with the help of the media, the Imperial Germans built saucer-type spacecraft and anti-gravity technology. We are now going to read an article about Maria Otzic. Maria Otzic and the real ladies. Maria Otsic was the daughter of an official from Croatia and a Viennese woman. Miss Maria Otsic was born in Vienna on October 31st, 1895. She joined the German national movement, which was very strong at the time, and whose goal was, among other things, the unification of Austria with the German Reich. In 1919, Maria moved to her boyfriend and later fiancé in Munich, and, together with several other women, founded a circle dedicated to the struggle for the Aryan culture. From 1922 on, this circle also dealt with completely different things, which were based on quasi-magical vibrational principles, but in fact reached into the technical realm. After the foundation of the Rose Society, or Society for Metaphysics, the media Maria and Sichrun received messages from the star system of Aldebaran from the zodiac sign of Taurus. They were received immediately, building instructions in an old Templar script. The Antibes Technische Werkstätten rebuilt these devices and developed a whole series of flying discs between the years 1922 and 1945. From the Rule 1 fighter to the 120 meter wide flying disc Rule Hausim Odin. In Jan van Helsing's book, Enterprise Aldebaran, you can read the media messages of the Royal Odin flying to Aldebaran. They use a dimensional conduit to fly to Aldebaran, where they encounter a space cruiser of the Aldebaran Space Forces. Maria Otsic disappears from the face of the Earth together with SS General Hans Kammler in March April of 1945, with the full intention of ensuring that a future Reich would emerge from technologies that had originally come from the Third Reich. And here are a couple of the important real ladies in between the years 1922 and 1945. Maria Otsic, Traunte, Sichrun, Hudrun, and Heike. So Maria Otsic was one of the main media of the Rose Society. She and the media Sichrun started receiving messages telepathically from Aldebaran with the instructions to build flying discs. During the 1920s, the propulsion workshop of the Rose Society built an entire series of flying discs. The V-7 capital ship Odin was meant to go to Aldebaran using a dimensional conduit. We will now read a thread about the V-7 capital ship Odin. Chapter 14. What testimonies are available for the real Odin flight? Again, it should be briefly mentioned that around Christmas 1943, an important meeting at the Royal Society North Sea Resort Kohlberg had taken place. It was about the Aldebaran Enterprise. The media Maria and Sigrun had exact information about the inhabited planets and the son of Aldebaran, and they started to work at the trip there. On the what is known as the Rope Project, the company one wanted to use the Ruhr Odin with a light speed independent dimensional canal to Aldebaran, but before this could happen, another meeting of the highest Ruhr people took place, whereby also the German leadership was informed about it, and the seriousness of the enterprise was shown again. We have the following presentation by Professor Dr. Schumann from the SDM archive, which was presented at this meeting. And there is a very interesting presentation from Professor Dr. Schumann. If you'd like to read it, the link is in the description. We will just briefly read this part. What can distant Starfleet bring us? We still don't really know it. The possible union and alliance of all the cultures of all the worlds. If the transmedia connections are not deceptive, there's a related culture in the system of the Sun Aldebaran. Perhaps support will come from there. A compensation against the numerical superiority of the enemy on Earth. Now this sounds like something out of a utopian novel, but it has a very tangible background. From the Untersberg Revelations text of the 13th century, it was clear how to proceed. But there is not the time to talk about this in detail. The coming period, or in the next months, should confirm in an impressive way what the real technology can achieve in its various possibilities. The secret of the starflight lies therefore in the recognition of the interweaving of this world and the next, and the grasping of the different but mutually resonating laws of God and nature on this side and the other. We are close to the dawn of a completely new age, in which a new spirit will prevail. It is our spirit, the spirit of the new age. And here you have a picture of the real Odin in flight, the source of this picture is the book Unternehmer de Brand, written by Janu de Hauli. This photo was taken in April of 1945. What is also very interesting are the transmedia protocols from Mr. X, Chapter 15 of Enterprise Aldebaran. 
The transmedia protocols of these times are certainly among the most unusual texts ever written. Transmedia, also hypertelepathic, receives messages from a distant wall far beyond our own solar system. Aldebaran, they report in a partially astonishing accuracy about the history of the distant world, about its society, its religion, and about the small things. Only small fragments of these writings have been preserved. Unfortunately, many passages have become illegible over the decades, as the protocols date from the periods between 1919 and 1949. Much of this period was lost or destroyed in the turmoil of the war. The transmedia protocols are only a few fragments of what remain. Now, some information about Aldebaran, as it was passed on through transmedia contacts, the Empire of Sumeran, according to an earthly star map, Aldebaran, has been a theocracy for a long time. Today's state system is under the rule of priestesses, but is not as firmly formed as the earthly states. They are semi-free principalities. Well, if you would like to read the transmedia protocols or transmissions from the real Odin, the link is in the description. It shows in detail how the real Odin 7 leaves Earth, passes through an asteroid field, then enters the dimensional conduit to Aldebaran, and even exits the dimensional conduit in Aldebaran, and meets up with a space cruiser of the Aldebaranic Space Forces. The link is in the description. I advise you to buy the book Enterprise Aldebaran from Yandur Hanoli, or at least visit my website to read the published articles there. The protocols of Mr. X are very interesting and worth reading. The protocols of Mr. X describe the Vril Odin leaving Earth, the Vril Odin going for an asteroid field, the Vril Odin entering the dimensional conduit and seeing all the colors in this conduit, then the Vril Odin exits the conduit in Aldebaran and meets up with a space cruiser of the Aldebaranic Space Forces. I have animated the trip of the Vril Odin in a short video. If you found my video entertaining and informative, don't forget to visit my website. I updated the website and it has a new look, and I'll keep writing regular articles for my website, so don't forget to visit. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and hit the bell button, and if you can't make a small donation, the details are in the description. Many greetings from Iran and Germany, and cheers! <laughs>